successes. An emotional win at Ferrari's home circuit at Monza in 97. And a first win for Ferrari at Monaco since 1981. But there were bad times too. That didn't work. You hit the wrong part of him, my friend. Accused of cheating again after a disqualification from the 1997 World Championships for deliberately driving into title rival Jack Villeneuve. And the following year, just missing out on the 1998 driver's title. In 1999, on the first lap of the British Grand Prix, things went from bad to worse. No, he's locked his brakes. It's as simple as that. It's a mistake. Look, and now he can't slow down. A simple driving mistake there from Michael Schumacher. Michael snatches a brake, look and then snatches both of them, panics, and just stays on the pedal straight to the scene of the accident, and at, that is at, a big impact. Yeah, at a, at a very considerable speed. That year, Ferrari won their first Constructors' Championship since Michael had joined them, but it was bittersweet. Michael's crash, caused by a rear brake failure, left him with a badly broken leg and a question mark over whether the great German would be able to return to form. Michael Schumacher is retiring after 15 years in Formula One. There have been headline highs and headline lows. Moments no lower than the 1999 British Grand Prix, where a failed rear brake sent him crashing into the tyre wall at Stowe Corner. He missed the next six races and the chance of claiming his first driver's title for Ferrari. But Michael fought back. He worked harder and came back fitter, stronger and even more determined. I think he worked harder than, than the majority out there. And uh, when you look at some of the other drivers that are probably going to take over um, from Michael in, in winning several Grand Prix, then they, they just don't appear to make the same effort. Uh, to drive one of these cars for a Grand Prix and get out as though you've, you've, you've done nothing, I mean, barely sweating, uh, is exceptional. His level of fitness is incredible. The Ferrari bad times were about to come to an end. Schumacher leads, Hacking and Coulthard and Barrichello side by side as they go. I think he's just 100% uh, uh, complete. The next five seasons belonged to Ferrari and to Michael Schumacher. Record after record fell. Michael smashed Senna's record of 41 race wins, Prost's record of 51, then Fangio's five championships. In 2004, Michael left the rest of the grid in his wake, winning 13 out of 18 races and becoming the first driver to win five consecutive world championships, a magnificent seven in all. Very few people that I've ever come across spend as much time as he does making sure his car is as perfect as it can be. No one could touch him. Michael became so dominant, it was whispered that his unchallenged success could even be damaging the sport. They're so passionate about their Ferrari team. It's the way they are. They love their racing here. But the Ferrari fans, the Tifosi, loved every minute of it. Marinello's spiritual home of Ferrari took Schumacher, a German, to their hearts. Victory followed victory followed victory. It's on fire, Ted. The car's on fire. We haven't seen this for years. And Michael Schumacher, what's he going to do? But in the midst of all the success and celebration, there was controversy. These legends and geniuses go sometimes to the edge and sometimes over the edge. The Schumacher belief in winning at any cost brought more calls of cheat, this time at the 2002 Austrian Grand Prix. It doesn't look as though there's going to be any team orders here, and nor should we ever really have believed there would be. Oh, he's getting very close to Michael Schumacher, but Rubens Barrichello comes through. He's not going to let Michael through, is he? No, they're going to... Yes, he is! I do not! Adam and Eve, what oh. is going on? It is a controversial area, we can't deny it, but it's it's part of his DNA, that's the way he is. And, um, you know, it, he can't stand for anyone else to win. I've never heard Michael Schumacher booed before. That's such a shame. Not good, not good for the sport, not good for anybody. 
I don't want to see that again. A case of team orders at the very end of the race resulted in embarrassment and criticism that rocked the sport to its core, damaging Schumacher and Ferrari's reputation. A reputation that wasn't helped by an ill-advised attempt to put things right later in the season at Indianapolis. A clumsy stage finish that left the American crowd scratching their heads and Formula One fans deeply disillusioned. Who's going to win this Grand Prix? It's a mystery. It's Michael Schumacher, 11th win of the season. Barrichello has been given the win. And according to the computer, Rubens Barrichello just won the Grand Prix. Sometimes it, it's bordered on the edge, and we all know that. But you know that—that's what makes a world champion. And uh, uh, I'd be disappointed if he was the other way. And there was personal tragedy too. At the 2003 San Marino Grand Prix, Schumacher raced and won, despite hearing the news of the death of his mother on the very day of the race. It was really his decision. There was nothing we could do except give him all the support we could. We would have understood whatever he wanted to do. Here he is coming onto the podium. What a pro. Through all this, the five seasons from 2000 to 2004 belonged to Schumacher. But that was all about to change. A young Spaniard and another team on a comeback charge were about to take the spring out of Michael's step. Fernando Alonso did the impossible. He out schumacher Schumacher. Aggressive, daring, even a little arrogant, Alonso took on the old man of the sport, and he won. And no one loved it more than Renault's Flavio Briatore, who had never forgiven Schumacher for leaving his Benetton team for Ferrari nine years before. 2005 was not a good season for Ferrari and Schumacher. Rule changes hurt their car. Alonso and Renault hurt their invincible reputation. And by the middle of the season, Schumacher admitted title defeat. Michael Schumacher, he is 35 seconds behind on lap 12. He was right. Alonso won his first championship. For the first time in five years, Michael was not number one. The 2006 season didn't look like it was going to be any better for Michael. A massive smash in Australia gave the race to Alonso. A few races later, at the twisty Monaco circuit, where pole position is as good as winning the race, Schumacher did something that left his reputation in tatters. He's made a mistake somewhere in the middle sector of this lap. One second He's made ago. another one at the Ras Gas Martin, straight off. Missed the turn in. Yeah, but that's going to spoil everybody else's lap too. The yellow flags are going to be out, and it's, that's going to keep in pole position. I wouldn't be at all surprised. Everybody's going to have to get out of it with the yellow flags. Alonso's on a flyer too. Here he comes. Alonso's coming up to the zone now. Will he get through the Rascas zone? He will indeed. He's got through. Alonso might just do it, James. Yeah, out of the final corner goes Fernando Alonso. He goes across the line. He's in pole. No, it's not. He misses out. Michael was again called cheat. He was thrown back down the grid and Alonso went on to win. Cheapest, dirtiest uh, thing I've ever seen in Formula One. This is the way Ferrari managed, you know. Monaco set the tone for another Schumacher comeback. He may have only scored two wins in the first nine races in 2006, but he fought back to win five of the next seven. Classic Ferrari, classic Schumacher. Michael Schumacher wins! Michael Schumacher wins! His third win in a row in this 2006 World Championship because Michael Schumacher wins the Italian Grand Prix, but it's given him the victory that gives him the lead in the World Championship. In the middle of this run came Monza and the news that had been hanging over the whole season.